Hey mate, welcome to Old Mate Adventures. Hi, I'm Kel. And I'm Jed. For nearly three years, we've been semi-retired, trekking, camping, and hunting our way around Australia. Follow along as we live life on our own terms, exploring the great outdoors and sharing our adventures. Oh, it's going everywhere. <laughs> See what happens when you try and be a smart ass. It's hit and miss that trick, eh? Yeah. Well, Cheers. Cheers. Uh. Oh, lovely. Yeah, month four we've just completed. And um, as you can see, we are just chilling out in front of our caravan because... No travel out to any nice scenery today, but we'll explain why a bit later. <laughs> You're true, true. Yeah. Yep. Bed's we've going got off. just uh, recently added some shade cloth to this area to try and keep it a little bit cooler. Block the Arvo sun out because yeah. it is getting pretty toasty up here. Starting to warm up quickly. Already. And the van, I just checked, it's like five o'clock in the Arvo. Oh, 4.30. And, um, and it's like 39 degrees in there. So yeah, we've pretty much been here alone. Mm. And so majority of the last sort of two and a half months, really, have been caretaking, eh? Mostly, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, so that's, and that's sort of taken over as our mm. main role here at the <laughs> moment. So we're just um, keeping the sprinklers going, doing a bit of gardening, mowing, bit of veggie patch stuff. So yeah, and then just we've got we've got a heap of woodies. Oh, like forty of them. Mm. And so, um, I don't know if we explained before. So woodies are basically like they're a wiener, but they're like smaller. So they they've come off their mum. They're not a, like a potty calf and needing to be fed milk or anything like that. But they're not quite strong enough just to be out like in the herd like with the rest of them. So they keep them close. Um, we supplement their feed like they have hay constantly. Um, this month we've got a um, added a feeder, um, so they've got like a pellet feed. Pellets, yeah. Um, that they've got there now. Um, and we chuck but, like a ton, a ton of pellets in there every sort of three weeks or something. Yeah, but they just stay nice and close to the house here. Oh, hey, Ooh, buddy. Cute little bed. Um, and we just keep an eye on them. So a couple um, of them have like really got good condition on them. Some of them look healthy as now, yeah. eh? Like real solid. Still a few. Yeah, but um, yeah. So we just look after them. Uh, I do a generator service every 10 days. Um, we've got chooks now as well, so we're looking after chooks. Uh, no eggs yet. Oh, we have chickens. <laughs> uh, we've got 10. They just um, had a bit of a hectic ride on the gravel road. And yeah, we'll get them um, sorted in their little hen house. Yeah, I'm just going to put it down first. There you go. Sorry, you mate. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. One of the jobs we've been doing the last sort of month is uh, we do a few lick runs. So while the other crew is at the other station, we've sort of picked up the job of like finishing off all the um, the dry lick runs. So for the um, dry season. Kelly is my gate lady today. She's doing a pretty good job. We're just going through the laneway. Lovely not having to open your own gates. Uh, yeah, today we're doing a uh, bit of a lick run. Um, it's probably, it's the second last paddock out of the back of the uh, station. So it's a bit of a trek, it's not too far, but um, yeah, we've the old lick trailer, she's um, she's pretty old school. So, uh, and we've got 1.2 one, 1 tonnes of lick on. So um, they're just in big 100 kilo round blocks. And then um, on the way back, we'll check a few water troughs and just make sure 
they're all good and clean them out if we have to and check out a couple of dams on the way back that might hold a couple of pigs. Keep going a bit more. Radio. They need to cross a eh? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, slightly moist today. We've um, surprisingly uh, got a bit of rain going on. Yeah, it started probably about midnight last night. And then uh, this morning we had a little bit of heavier rain. But yeah, for the rest of the day, it's just sort of been drizzling. So yeah, today I'm just doing a little uh, mission. Just got to fix a fence that we've seen um, had been pushed over yesterday. And then yeah, got a little bit of lick just to chuck out in one of the lick troughs. So yeah, just going to do that for the Sarvo. Uh, should only take like an hour or so. Punch out there, or I've got the 6.5 and um, we'll see if we can uh, find a pig. Would be um, extra bonus for a Sunday. Uh, no pigs yet, but um, yeah, I've arrived at the fence that needs fixing. Yeah, I'll jam a star picket in the middle here. And you can see this one is just snapped off at the base. Same with another one down there. So anyway, I'll um, get a couple of star pickets out and sort them out. Oh, sweet, that's um, that job done. Uh, I'm just going to duck through to this paddock behind me and um, and yeah, there's a lick trough somewhere down the road there. I've never been into that paddock before, so um, yeah, I kind of think I know where to go, but um, we'll see if we can find it. It shouldn't be too hard. I think the lick trough's just up here. Oh yeah, there we go. Old Bessie's just waiting for the lick. There you go, oh, uh, hang around. All right, don't then. Yeah, the cows are coming. What's going on? What's happening? Yummy, yummy. Dig in. Good. Looks like you're being snow. Sn <laughs> Looks like you're being snorting cocaine. Anyway, I'll um, get out of their way so they can um, enjoy their Sunday breakfast. They're into it. I'm out today um, doing a lick run. I just passed a cow and calf, literally had just been born. Like, I think the mother just got up as I was driving past from giving birth to the calf. But yeah, that was probably the newest born calf. We keep talking about it, that we're, um, we see these little ones that have look like it's definitely their first day on earth but um yeah i reckon that was its first few minutes on earth that one that was crazy but yeah just doing a solo mission today because um kel's got a bit of a sore back cool anyway i'll um keep trekking and uh dump all this lick out hello cow Perfect. Uh, this one was completely empty, so they'll be pretty stoked about that, as you can see. Pretty good, eh? You always get a couple that just don't give a fuck. They just come in and the, uh, the rest of them all just wait out the back <laughs> and they're just a bit, eh, not too sure about this. But uh, they'll let the um, couple of Bessies come in. Usually it's the uh, the local bull, which he is, well he was, 
Oh, he's over there. He came over and said hello, and then he um, he fucked off for a drink. And he's got a few ladies here. Lucky fella. Gets onto it. Yeah, it's a uh, slow road this morning. Uh, doing another lick run out onto the road that no one has driven down this whole year. As you can see, there is uh, trees growing in the middle of it. Um, so yeah, I'm just passing along very slow. Don't want to break the Toyota way out in the middle of nowhere. I've got the Zolio with me, which is um, which has been pretty handy. Um, it takes a while for the text message to sort of get through, but um, but yeah, you can text each other and um, yeah, and have that communication. This looks very pig. Good pig land. A little bit swampy out the side of me. That's why I'm just being cautious. There's not some. Oh, hit the horn. <laughs> It's so fucking rough. And I'm literally doing like three kilometers, maybe two kilometers an hour. So yeah, the month before we got out to King Ash Bay, and then we were able to get out to Tyre Springs where we filmed a couple of the first um, episodes up here and we got back there for some fishing. Mm. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been pretty good. It's like a spring that runs all year round and obviously flows pretty hard during the wet season. And um, but they've got a lot of uh, sooty grunters in there. So that's a pretty common sort of freshwater fish up here, mm. which was the first for me. I'd never... Um, I never caught them. So yeah, we went, um, we did a couple of trips out to Thai Springs to sort of, yeah, have a bit more of an explore out there, make a bit of a day of it, um, you know, an arvo of it, and hmm. sort of explore that whole waterway, which is, um, which is pretty good. It doesn't get super deep there, maybe a couple of meters deep at the deepest, but um, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, it's awesome country. Yeah, it's, it's in the middle of nowhere. Beautiful. So yeah, we got into some grunters. And a little cook up. Yeah, cooked Out up a couple. There. They were pretty tasty. And then also another little fishing, not as not a super successful fishing mission, but we did um, go out and do a day trip um, out to meet the owners um, at another station. So there's a place, um, neighbouring station again. <laughs> this one not owned by the same people. Um, but yeah, on the station there is a place called Bessie Springs. It used to be accessible to the public. Um, it's not anymore. So thankfully, we know someone fucking hurt themselves. Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> always takes one. Always one. Um, yeah, our owners obviously know the owners of that spot and uh, can get permission for us to go there, and it mm. is just absolutely awesome. stunning. That was successful though. Yeah, we didn't like. I didn't keep any. Keep any or eat it. Yeah, yeah, they were my biggest uh, sooties there. True. Yeah, yeah, I got like four three or four decent ones i reckon yeah right. yeah but yeah it's real um real kimberly looking eh? Mm. like you, you sort of go there and you're like oh, what? the rock and stuff is just real absolutely similar beautiful. country but um yeah. yeah that was great to be able to get in there and that's yeah. one of the bonuses about doing what we do is um get access to those places that just no one can no really one yeah you literally drive past the turn off and it's a few k's in to this other station mm. and um You'd never, never know. Clue there. You'd never know, eh? It's 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 yeah. nuts, yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. That was really good. Yeah, good to get a bit of fishing in. Yeah, yep. Uh, yeah, last month we um, got into a few pigs. It's uh, starting to dry up a fair bit around here. A lot of the grass, though, is um, unless it's good cattle feed, it's a lot of grass is still pretty high. So it's still fairly challenging in that sort of department with. Um, they can disappear very easily. Super quickly, eh? And, uh, but yeah, we're finding them a lot more out in the open during the day and trying to get to those water sources. Pigs.
I'm out. <laughs> I'll go back and get some more rounds. I'll be hiding somewhere, sitting down in the, in the grass. There's one right there. Oh, there's his mate. Done. Yeah, well that worked out quite productive. Um, other than me running out of ammo halfway through. And <laughs> so yeah, anyway, I um, scouted around this water hole. There's a boar over here, like a water boar, not an actual pig boar, that um, I came to check out. We repaired a fence there a couple of days ago and I'm just chucking some lick out right near the uh, boar here. And uh, I thought I'd have a look around because it's the only water hole in a fair distance. So um, there's always a good chance there's something hanging around here. But um, anyway, caught him out in the open and it's, uh, yeah, lights out. Well, it was a good little boar just to finish the day off with uh, I think seven pigs all up. I was just driving back from my last little lick run and um, and then yeah, I've seen this fella just off the road, only 80 meters or so, maybe not even, 70 meters. And um, yeah, he's just sitting underneath this tree here and he had two little mates with him and uh, they took off pretty quick. Yeah, I was just um, saying this morning that I haven't shot any pigs for almost two weeks. And um, that's how it goes. Seven in like the last half hour, which is pretty good. Back on the board. Take that. Woo, he was about to go me. <laughs> uh, well, um, finally got a, uh, a boar out in the open with the um, old Adler. Yeah, he's definitely not the biggest I've um, pulled out of this uh, paddock. He's pretty decent though. Maybe, I don't know, 70 kilos. Yeah, I come up and check this um, top tank here and that feeds our um, homestead water tank as well and I thought I might as well come up here just on sunset and see if there's anything hanging around that dam. There's a gully down behind me there and he was running down towards that and this is a big open flat country so I was just trying to poke alongside him and um, sometimes they just stop and sort of change direction and I was waiting for that to stop and anyway he didn't stop and I shot out in front of him and um, missed him and then um, he turned around and stopped and um, then he came straight for me. I think he was going to have a bit of a crack, but anyway, your day's not going too well now, is it, buddy? Cool, one less pig. So what's happening is um, we're right next to the homestead, and just behind us is our caravan. We've got a little paddock just on the other side of our driveway, and um, oh, probably a week or two ago, we put a, um, a feed bin in there to help the woodies and I've just gone over to check the water tank it's about nine o'clock at night and I heard a bit of a squeal and I think there's a heap of pigs surrounding the, um, the feed bin so I'm going to sort of position myself uh, about 150 200 meters away and try not to shoot the grain bin obviously <laughs> and uh, try and get a clean shot on one of these pigs There's no big ones. One pig is better than no pigs. 
and that's what they're into getting all the grain Woody's all good you all good Woody's? they're all good Kitty cat in a tree here. Oh well, that has been quite a productive um, evening. Uh, we just got back from Catherine literally uh, four or five hours ago and had some dinner and cleaned ourselves up. And yeah, I've pretty much been out um, ever since. I could hear pigs from our caravan. But yeah, managed to get three so far and a cat bloody lovely uh obviously because we haven't had really anyone here much like or consistently um this month we haven't done like a heap of big meals or anything yeah. like that um we pretty much yeah just getting people for a few nights here and there but we have um we got around to filming crumb steak um, that's always like a huge hit <laughs> on the station. Yeah, Savo, we're doing crumb steak. It's probably one of the most popular meals on the station uh, and pretty bloody simple. There's a little bit of prep work though involved. Um, you've got to tenderize the meat, mostly because you use not the best cuts of meat with crumb steak. I think we used a bit of top side, um, maybe your rounds and stuff like that. But yeah, fairly simple. You need some steak, and you can see it's cut pretty thin. So you need some plain flour, some eggs, and of course, breadcrumbs. The first step is though, to prepare the meat and tenderize it. Uh, Kel found a little trick. We just wrap the cutting board in glad wrap, and then have a second layer over the top of that, and then you don't get shit sort of everywhere, splattering everywhere, and it works pretty good. Once you've uh, tenderized it, it spreads out a fair bit and becomes quite big pieces of steak, but um, nice, super thin and uh, heaps more tender. Oh, all sweet. That's uh, the prep pretty much done. I'm going to bash this back in the uh, fridge for a couple of hours until it's ready to cook. And then we'll crank out the deep fry and get into it. Sweet, the oil's in. 180 degrees. Give it 10 minutes or so and she should be ready to go. Sweet, light's gone off. Let's deep fry some steak. Yeah, buddy. Let's have a timer for three minutes and wait. And we're good. Oh, yeah. How good is that? All right. And now we just repeat that process. You run out of crumb steak, pretty much. Anyway, that's it. Uh, crumbed steak. Done in the deep fryer. Flour, egg and bread crumbs. Tenderize it with a hammer. Good to go. Yeah, as uh, like being so remote, it's, um, it's always a bit of a challenge to get uh, postage and stuff delivered here. And so on and off, I've been doing a bit of rod building in between. I bought a fair bit of gear up here to build some rods and I think uh, I'm on to my fourth or fifth rod. But yeah, building a couple of rods for um, like customers and whatever mm. and getting a few um, just finished off that I've been had on the back burner. Yeah, just back on the um, charity rod build. Uh, I've got to um, just finish off this decorative wrap uh, and then trim all the excess off. Uh, put the winding check on and I've got a tiny little hook keeper here 
and um, I'll put that on. It's a little folding one, which um, which I yeah I'd probably use half the time. Yeah, just finish the rest of this decorative trim and uh, tie it off at the end here. Then you're going to be careful not to um, nick the blank or anything when you're taking all your excess masking tape and thread off. And then um, we'll put this winding check on and hook keeper. And that's pretty much it. And she's done. Uh, this morning back into the uh, the old abandoned med centre, doing a bit of rod building. I was hoping to get a good day on it yesterday, uh, but we did a few odd jobs around here, had to give some hay out to the um, woodies and do a bit of stuff. We've got some chooks now, so we got, um, so I was doing a bit of stuff trying to fix up the chook pen, make it a little bit better. And uh, anyway, I got distracted and only got two guides done out of the four or five I was hoping to do and then I stuffed up the last one so now I've got to do the um, inevitable cut that off and start again but I'm kind of uh, got a little bit of a pattern going so with the decorative trim I'll put on here continued a similar sort of pattern along here just with a little tiny trim band put in there nothing too fancy and continued the same along with this one just switching it over to a lighter pink and then as I work down the rod, I'll just switch between the purple and pink. I'll get cracking, I'll cut this one off that I've finished uh, just because I'm not super happy with it and um, start that one again and hopefully finish off the guides on this the next day. And then after that, epoxy and epoxy and it'll be finished. Uh, well, that's the uh, second coat done. Uh, I'm just going to let that second coat uh, dry overnight and do a third coat in the morning. All right, today I'm starting another rod build. Uh, this one using a Samurai Blank CG3, one of the Estuary series. This is a 8 to 16 pound, so 4 to 8 kilo. Anyway, just positioning the reel seat and the grips, just seeing where it all sits. Uh, just using black EVA grips on this one. And I've just finished off the charity rod for pink ribbon fishing. And I've used these Alps guides for the first time. And also on this customer's rod, I'm using the same brand of guides, these Alps guides. But these are the polished stainless frame with the gold insert. Yeah, and this rod's for a patron of ours. And so we're just putting it all together and seeing what uh, works. Uh, I'm going to play with a couple of little ideas with the uh, guides and how I'm going to do the decorative sort of trim on them. Uh, yeah, it should be pretty nice, I reckon. Like the black blank with the gold guides and the pale gold sort of light tanny brown colour all through it. It'll look, uh, it'll look lovely. attempts it's come up uh, pretty good pretty good uh, yeah I wasn't too sure when I um, when the customer asked me this which is also one of our patrons is um, yeah, to make, build this rod and incorporate um, some browns in there um, they're a big fan of the brown and haven't sounds bad doesn't it <laughs> Oh uh, shit. Anyway. <laughs> Poor choice of words. Had to gather myself there for a second. Anyway, um, when I was asked to put some browns in there, um, I was like, yeah, yeah. anyway, uh, I ordered some different colours and um, it's 
it's turned out pretty good. I've got a bit of a plan now for the guides and um, I'll put a little hook keeper, put a decal in there. I'll probably do the decal right at the end. And, but then I can start on the rest of the guides. So anyway, that looks pretty sweet and I'll keep that pattern uh, for the rest of the build. So yeah, it's been pretty good. And as parts come in, I've been able to build the rods. And, um, but now that we're sort of um, coming up to the end of our stint sort of thing in the next month or whatever, We'll, um, I'll just think. mail takes so long to get here. Like, it's, it's crazy, just, yeah. The, yeah. Nothing's reliable. So, yeah, so I'll finish off what I can. But, um, and then. Can't really order anything new now. Nah, and then, um, finish off whatever else on the, on the way home. Yeah, and then the website, uh, we, we sort of run on the side has been pretty busy as well. Some people would have already, um, seen through our social media, like we did a pre order for, uh, with our pink ribbon fishing stuff. Uh, we're still doing the giveaway at the uh, start of December. So anyone who purchases pink ribbon fishing merch through our website, uh, every $5 that's spent gets an entry into the giveaway. So yeah, we've added uh, a couple of more products and one is we've got three colours of beanies. So the pre-order's all um, done and dusted. We got all the stock sent um, home. So my parents helped with getting those all distributed to the people that had um, ordered in the pre-order round and then sent us um, the rest of it. And we've got a couple of new sponsors on the Pink Ribbon Fishing giveaway. Mm. Um, another guy is Adam from Wayward Fishing. And yeah, he makes custom lures from recycled plastic bottle tops. Mm. So um, yeah, That's it's so awesome. Cool. Uh, I bought some for myself, like uh, some ones, but he made us some custom pink ones, which are unreal. Yeah. So um, yeah, so that'll be added. cheers Adam for doing that. And yeah, he sent them and it's, they're already down south. So um, we'll put that in one of the prizes for this year. And uh, yeah, fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah, really cool. Yeah, we continue on with the veggie patch, even though no one's here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've got, uh, I've had snow peas cranking. Um, they've been growing pretty good. Uh, I think the caterpillars have kind of died off a little bit. I mm. wasn't getting as peppered by caterpillars in the last sort of month than, than previous months. Uh, we uh, do get the, the bin chickens in now, which are a pain in the ass. And um, now that the tomatoes, some of them are starting to go uh, fairly ripe and I'm pretty sure it's the cherry tomato plants that I planted because I just got them out of a uh, punnet that it was in the fridge originally. Just a medley punnet. Yeah, yeah, yeah and chopped them cool. all up and then just planted chopped up tomatoes pretty much in soil and they mm. all sprouted but they're not the red cherry tomatoes <laughs> they're like the, the yellow them, orangey ones. Some of them might be eventually but yeah they Maybe. seem to be the yellow. Yeah so but anyway uh, the bin chickens have been into them so mm. anyway we'll try yes. and keep them at bay and we've got zucchinis cranking mm -hmm. which is awesome and um, capsicum got peppered by birds. Yeah I almost had two ripe capsicums and bin chickens are into them. Yeah and other than Spring that spring onions been cranking basil's been cranking yeah been using the basil and we've got the peppermint i repotted that and that just got out of control but, but yeah now the veggie patch is good fun i would like to if i get time before we leave here to be able to sort of do a couple more permanent sort of shade houses or structures or something maybe put a bit of a path in or something like that but I'll do what I can do before we leave here and, um, and yeah, just try and Perfect. tweak it up a little bit. Mm. Yeah, no, veggie patch is good fun. <laughs> and so I guess, yeah, like talking about do what we can do before we leave. We may be in the position at the moment that we'll be leaving sooner rather than later, unfortunately. Nearly three, it'll be three weeks um, ago. Um, I started having a really sore lower back, um, got pretty intense for a few days and it backed off a little bit, but has just been pretty consistent, um, for quite a while now. So obviously with all my previous issues and, and stuff like that, you know, the mind boggles at all the things that it could be. So we ended up after, yeah, like two and a half weeks deciding to 
do the run into Catherine to go to the hospital and get checked out. So the doctor at um, emergency could not have been better. Like he was absolutely amazing, completely understood all my concerns and did CTs and bloods and all that stuff to rule out anything um, cancer related, which was obviously a huge relief, but we still don't really know exactly what's going on. I ended up getting in and seeing a physio the next day. And so, yeah, we just got back from Catherine a couple of days ago and we're just sort of riding it out at the moment to see what what's happening. So at the moment it's sort of daily stretches and gentle walks and but mainly what, just duties. laying around <laughs> doing as little as possible otherwise I get in trouble um, but if it doesn't get better the, the issue is that we're yeah. so far from any kind of treatment so we'll and it's the reality possibly... of living so remote like yeah whether whether you've got a, uh, a toothache or something mm. like that you know you've just got to travel so hundreds far to get any thousands, help. Like not hundreds of thousands, but hundreds, <laughs> two thousands of kilometres, you yeah. know, to get anywhere for any sort of treatment, mm. and proper treatment. See and worst happens. case scenario would be like a month or so earlier than originally sort of planned and and uh, it's no real biggie. So, mm. and uh, start getting physio and bits and pieces. Mm. So Get you ready for decky dive season. Mm. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's, that's absolutely my priority that's my priority <laughs> <laughs> for the next month um, yeah we're just going to play it by ear with Kel's back and see what happens and overall over the last sort of four months it's been it's been pretty good it was a pretty <gasps> hectic start to the um, to the journey here. yeah uh, yeah we didn't have a day off for like over mm. six weeks or whatever to almost being full-time caretakers, yeah. which, is, which is good. Yeah, cool. Oh, here's the uh, four months. Four months. Boom. Same. Cheers. Cheers. Did you dribble that? Yeah, I dribbled on myself. Oh, my God. Filtered through my beard. And fucking done. <laughs> <laughs>